Hello, welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tip video. Now, this one's going to be epic. You could probably guess what it's about from what's on the screen at the moment, but we're going to look at building this JK C43 alias chassis. So, we're going to go from taking out a packet, pretty much what I've just done there in front of you, we're going to compare a couple of chassis and we're going to build it up till it's ready to run. Join me after these intros. So we'll start by having a look at these couple of chassis. Now, these JK chassis, these revolutionised 124th production racing around the world, really, um, they handle so well. They are a bit, take a little bit of time to get right and build up, but they do handle so well and they're so fast, um, mainly for flat track racing. I'm not too sure how many people actually use them on bank tracks or king tracks in the USA. But I know for flat track racing, they are absolutely fantastic and virtually unbeatable. We're going to have a look at these couple of chassis. You can see this one here on the left is actually one of the ones left over from the 2019 ISRA Worlds in the UK. It's actually engraved with the ISRA track and a number on it. The one on the right is one that I just purchased from a UK distributor uh, for JK chassis. And we're just going to have a look at the difference between the two. Now, they're not quite the same. Obviously, this has had en engraving done on it, but there are a few little differences in the pressing, uh, some little extra marks on one rather than the other. So I'm going to put some pictures on the screen in a moment and to show you some of the differences between the two chassis on both the top face and the bottom face of the chassis. So now we've gone through the subtle differences between the two chassis. Let's start with the one numbered 30. So the leftover Isra chassis. So before I do anything really, I just sort of have a, have a quick look at the chassis, see sort of how it, how it sits on the block. So I'm, I've got a nice flat granite surface block. I made sure it's all nice and clean so there's no little bits of dust or dirt on the surface block. I've also made sure that the bottom of the chassis is nice and clean. And I put it on my block and then I can just, just test just by pressing in various places and corners and uh, sort of in the middle and on the ears at the front and again on the back corners. I can see that it definitely is not sitting very flat. It's not the worst I've seen. Uh, it's probably not the best I've seen, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to start with the centre section and try and flatten that out and make sure that sits nice and flat on my block. The common places where these centre sections are a little bit misshapen are across the front end. So often they're actually a little bit high in the middle with these two front ears bent down slightly. Uh, sometimes, you, depending on how they've been stored in your distributor's box or on the shelf or wherever they've come from, yeah, they could be bent in other ways. But Generally, these ears tend to be bent down slightly, but I have come across ones where they've been bent right up in the air. So clearly they've been put in a box and something thrown on top of them and it's, it's bent the chassis actually in the bag. Um, they're also can be bent uh, about here. So sometimes the centre section is sort of bent down or up here and they don't sit very well where this pressing is around these uh, two front loops here. Another common area, obviously, where this centre bar is pressed, the chassis can sometimes be sort of curved um, more in that direction, okay, and warped there where they've been pressed. And again, around the motor box here where this complex pressing is, often you find the back of the motor box is sort of angled up. So that when you put it on your block and you press down at the back, the front tends to come up in the air. Also, again, the pillow blocks at the back tend to be a little bit misshapen. They're not necessarily both entirely vertical. And again, 
this piece that runs along the back is perhaps not entirely flat. So again, it's just worth spending time getting some of the parts totally flat. Um, and I'll show you some tips of how to do that in a moment. I'm going to start at the front and work my way back down the centre section. So putting the front of it on a block, you can see that this front ear is touching the block and this front ear, this side is touching the block, but there's a bit of a gap in the middle and perhaps more of a gap on this side than there is on this side. So if I just push on that center, can you see the gap changing? Especially if I push there, you can see, you can see there's light coming through there. You can even see my finger behind the gap there. And then as I'm pushing down, you can see I'm reducing that gap. So that's fairly easy to fix because you can just bend these generally by hand. You don't need any tools to bend those unless they've got a particular bend or a curve sort of halfway down the ear. So I'm going to start bending those just by hand and see if I can improve the front of the chassis. I think that's a lot better. Just that little bit of work there. You can go along, can't see any daylight under there. There's this bit still on the block. This bit on this side still on the block. And there's no gap down the middle. So I'm quite happy that the front of my chassis is now flat. It's also worth at this stage checking how does the guide tab sit in relation to the block as well. So I'm going to put a straight edge on top of the guide tab and have a look. Now if I'm holding that there you can see that actually on the right hand side it's actually higher than it is on the left hand side. So to solve that problem of the guide tab angled on one side I use my little Proxon vise. Again I've used this in previous videos. Uh, there's a link to where you can get this in the description below. But a really handy little vise. So I put my guide tab in the vise with some coins either side. Now these are five pence UK coins, but other coins are available. So I put that in there and notice I've spaced it so that the ears of the chassis sit between the vise jaws, but obviously aren't clamped. And then you can, by eye, you can line it up and you can see difference in spacing between one side and the other and if you need to tweak your guide tab slightly you can tweak the chassis via the middle bits don't hold the ears and bend it because obviously they will bend very easily but you can hold it by the middle and bend your chassis one way or the other the other thing that can be quite handy is a narrow pair of parallel pliers because you can actually get those on the chassis. So these ones are yeah, just fit between these little uprights and the guide tab. And then you can put those onto there and then you can use these to adjust your chassis one way or the other without bending the ears of the chassis or without bending the rest of the center of the chassis. And then you can get your guide tab obviously lined up parallel with the jaws of the vise. So after you're done tweaking your guide tab in the vise, you should end up with it looking much better like that. So there we are. We have equal distance either side along the ruler. So we know that's pretty parallel that way. Now it's also worth having a look at it this way as well to see what angle it's at. So again, I can put a straight edge on the top of that, like so. And you can see it's very slightly angled up at the front. And that's what we want. We want a slight angle. Just rest that on there. Very slight angle up at the front. And I'll explain why later. But having a look at the front of the chassis again, we don't have any gaps. We can press along there all the parts of the chassis along the front are touching the block and it's nice and flat. So then we will move on and we'll sort out this centre part. So now we think we've got the front nice and straight and flat and we've got the guide tab correct. I tend to 
put my sort of head down right down to the level of the block and look along under the chassis just to see if I can see any gaps of light under the front of the chassis. But another way you can do it is maybe use a feeler gauge. So here's a two thou feeler gauge and then I just run it along here underneath and see look it touches the chassis it doesn't go under the chassis run it along here we look okay all the way along that side and from that side of the chassis it's all still sitting nice and flat there along but then when we come to about here see it goes under the chassis there we go so i know i've got now a problem around this area which is what i expected anyway if the middle part of the chassis wasn't particularly flat and you had, let's say you had a bit of a gap maybe here and here, that's quite common, then I potentially use the edge of the block and then I can use the edge of the block to bend the chassis one way or the other and then you get a nice edge to bend your chassis around to straighten it out. And then it's always worth also just checking you can just do a rough sort of twist one way or twist the other way of the chassis just to help it sit nicely on the block just so you can work from the front backwards because often if the back is far too twisted then it holds the front in the air when in fact actually the front is actually fairly flat and straight it's just the back that's holding it in the air so sometimes I might even deliberately bend the back of the chassis up slightly just so it doesn't cause any problems along this part when I'm sorting this part of the chassis here. And then obviously you can always straighten the back later. So on closer examination of the back of the chassis, if I'm holding it on the block here, you can just about see, if I press there, that the back of the chassis here by the pillar block is actually on, on the flat block. The part here is on the block and it's just a little bit raised in the middle there so that's probably this rear pillar block lifting up this part of the chassis at the moment so I'm basically I'm going to bend this part of the pillar block in that direction up like that now sometimes you can do that with your hands just like this sometimes it might be a little bit harder so you can get a pair of pliers on like so and then I tend to try and look at exactly where it has bent. Now it's more sort of around this area here where there is the bend. So I'm going to bring that back a little bit like that and then I'm just going to try and bend it up from there. Putting a bit of pressure on like that and see if that makes any difference at all. There we go. Let's put that onto there small difference maybe I need to just keep going and get that perfectly flat so now after a combination of bending and tweaking with some different pliers like these here each set of pliers really gives you the opportunity to get into different spaces on the chassis so potentially you know, these ones here are really useful for really major bending especially if you've got to bend these little upright parts where the pillar block is and where the motor is, they're really good for getting hold of hold of that and then giving it a good bend. Obviously long nose pliers can be quite good for getting into little gaps in between things like that. Or maybe you just want to get down that side there, although I haven't done anything on this side of the motor box yet. And again, some flat pliers like this and flat nose pliers they're quite good if you want to spread the load out over a large area. Again, parallel pliers like these. These can be, again, quite handy if you want to hold a whole area flat whilst you're bending. But there are various qualities of these, and these, to be honest, aren't very good. And as you can see, they don't quite sit parallel. They've got a little bit of movement in them like this. So they don't quite hold everything and it's this middle joint that's worn. So I've got to get a new pair of them and maybe go for a much higher quality pair. So let's have a look 
and see where does this sit with our feeler gauge. So again, remember to keep your block clean, make sure there's no dust or anything under the chassis. I tend to sort of wibble it around a little bit on the block like that, just to make sure there's no dust or anything caught underneath. So let's go along and we can see, look, yep, feeler gauge not going under the chassis there. And there we go, a little bit under the back there. But if I take it from that back edge, there's not. So it's just the curve of the pillar block that's feeding the feeler gauge underneath a little bit and then it moves. There we go. So we're good all the way along. Now it's just this back corner to have a look at. Now we can probably see that if I hold the feeler gauge there, yep, it's clear. That even goes all the way under there. So I've got a little bit of work to do there so from that point onwards. Let's see what we're like in the motor box. Let's just feed that in. Oh, so it's tight there, but then it tight there. Will it go under there? No, so it's probably this bit's just sort of tweaked up a little bit, raised up at this side, but it's still down around the motor box there. So we'll have a closer look at that. And again, use my combination of pliers. Maybe, maybe I need to get a pair of pliers on there and I need to bend it sort of that way a little bit just to tweak that bit down. I'll have a closer look and see what the exact cause is. And then we'll get back to it. So we're back after a bit of tweaking. Finally got what I think is a fairly flat center section. So let's just look with our feeler gauge and see what we've got. So let's run it along the back, hold it close. There we go. Can see that that's not traveling underneath pushing it there a little bit there but then it catches just there so it's just the edge so coming along there around there or a little tiny bit just there where it goes under but it catches by there around the front let's try it over this side and catching all the way down there all the way around there Try it across the front, a little bit under there. So I might just go back and retweak that bit. Catches there, across there, all the way there. So just maybe these two front corners here need just a little bit of tweaking down with the pliers to improve those. But at this back corner here, what I found was that this part here imagine it straight like that this part there was actually tweaked like that so all across here it was actually imagine it was bent up at this end here and it was down towards the motor box so I had to get a pair of pliers and tweak it all down it was quite handy because I can use my flat pliers sort of across that whole area like that and then give it a bend in that direction just to tweak it down a little bit and again there was some distortion around here so again I was able to put my pliers onto there and bend it about there you know where that corner is and again where that corner there is so by bending that flattening that with my flat pliers and I did actually have to use my rather large pliers a little bit just across there on this part to get that bit to sit flat but I'm fairly happy with that I was obviously when you start bending one bit sometimes the other bits bend as well so you have to go back and make sure is the middle still sitting nice and flat if it's not remember you can hang it over the edge of the block and you can bend it over the edge of the block a little bit to flatten that part out again you've got to watch this part across here because sometimes as I say that's bent one way or the other where that pressing is but I suppose ultimately it's not so important that this middle part is totally flat because nothing really goes on that middle part. I would say as long as the contact points are good, such as these two front corners here, pretty much your back two corners where the pillar blocks are and where your axle is going to go across and generally around this motor box part and the two or basically across here where the J bar goes, that's important. And again, across here where the J bar goes. What sort of happens in the middle is not so important. Again, it doesn't matter about this back part here, as long as it's not lower in the middle than it is at the two edges and that you don't want the chassis to rock from side to side. So you don't want this part here 
to be sitting down like that. It doesn't matter if it goes up a little bit, but you don't want it to come down. Again, you don't want any of the areas of the motor box to come down and round. You want basically, as I say, the main contact points to be nice and flat. One of the last things to look at on your centre section, obviously not quite these hinges yet because we'll look at those in when we've done our pans, but one of the last things to check is our pillar blocks and how they sit. So I use a square uh, end of a ruler here. I've checked the ruler, so it's pretty square. But again, you can use an engineer's square or a nice square block, etc. But you can bring hold that on your block and then bring it up to your pillar block and check how vertical they are. Now this one actually is not bad. And again, it's always worth, if you're going to use the end of a ruler, flip it round and check it both sides of the ruler because sometimes the ruler will not be quite square. So if I hold that in the right place. You can see that this ruler is actually pretty good in that it's square both ways round. So that pillar box is quite good. This one here, how does that one look? Again, no visible gaps. Turn that one round. So I'm pretty lucky there in that that one's pretty square on both pillar blocks. If they're not, then again, it's a simple case of putting your pliers on your pillar blocks, put your pliers on and then bend it one way or the other. But remember, when you do that, you could misshape around the motor box. So after you've done that, you'll have to put it back on your block again and check that it's all nice and flat and straight and fix any problems that you've caused by bending the pillar blocks at the back. But again, it's, it's just time and effort really to make these things flat. But I think I'm pretty happy with that chassis now. And it's time to move on. So that concludes the first part about building your JK C43 alias chassis. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe so that you know when the next episode is coming out. And next time we're going to be looking at how we flatten the pan section. See you soon.